Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Shoot360. The future of basketball has arrived in Dallas, Fort Worth. Shoot360 combines the latest sports technology with the fundamentals of basketball skill development. The result is a one of a kind video game like basketball program designed to improve your shooting, dribbling, and passing. Visit shoot360dfw.com to learn more and register for your free one hour workout evaluation. Shoot360, the future of basketball is here. We've kind of taken the the year that Marquise Noel had and your first year to coach him. I mean, you're coming in with this idea of winning, but there are, besides him and another player, there's, you know, 12 to 14 other new pieces around. So you're trying to build this culture and identity. And he was, he was so much fun to watch. And, and, and a fun, it looked to me like a phenomenal leader. What did you do to kind of build confidence in him to be able to, man, just have the season that he had, play the role that he played. I, I got out the way. You know, like he he has played a lot of basketball. You know, Marquise is 23 years old. He's played a lot of basketball, been around a lot of really good coaches mm. in his life. So he sees the game a certain way. And um, early on, I was trying to get him to see it the way I see it, right? And uh, we always say there's a lot of ways to get to four, right? Two plus two is four. Two times two is four. One plus three is four. You know, and so there's a lot of ways to get there. And when I got out of the way and uh, really God just taught me the lesson of, you know, that he's my guy and stop comparing him to everybody else, and, mm. you know, and learn to see the game the way he sees it. And when we both decided to do that, I apologized to him that I was trying to make him see it in a way that, that wasn't going to allow him to operate in his strength nor play with confidence. What makes him great is the edge that he plays with and the swag and the confidence that he has, right? And I was limiting that, and he was limiting it trying to please me. Mm. And so when I got to where I got out the way and said, look, I want you to be you, and and we're going to – I'm going to help you see it a little bit the way I see it because I believe in the last five minutes of the game, if it's close, you know, our staff can help us win the game. Right. And but to get it there, you have to be who you are. And I'm going to try and see it through your eyes. And we we came to that compromise and and I got out the way and and that young fellow was able to blossom. Man, I I get that because he was making some plays and and some decisions, shooting from 30 feet, uh, some difficult finishes, leaping to pass a lot of no looks and, and higher difficulty passes, but it's not that other players can't do that, but most of the time they're either not straight up, not allowed, or there's too much (laughs) fear involved. So I think you're right. I think you took what he does really well and then just pour gasoline on it. You know, instead of asking him to be less, you asked him to be more and to do everything that he loves to do, but just with, and I, I think it's a lesson for all of us. See, really notice what your players are capable of and don't handicap them with fear uh, or to put our own shackles on them with maybe because we couldn't do that. Cause I couldn't do any of the things he could do. <laughs> so, right. if, and, yeah. you know, our coaches taught us, you know, throw, keep both feet on the floor. Yeah. You know, when you throw a pass, don't jump in the air to throw a pass. And, you know, there are times when I had to get him to do that. He had to understand those times, but there were times where I needed to move a piece so that when he left his feet, that it wasn't putting him in a turnover situation. So, you know, lift the big and and then give him that driving lane so now he can leave his feet and throw the pass because it, it, he has a comfortability in that, you know. And, yeah. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? So it was, it was us trying to figure out how to put him in the best situation. And then he learned time and score. He really, yeah. uh, he really embraced understanding time and score. To, to help the team move forward. I think, too, we got to understand that for other players now watching him play, it doesn't mean just because it works for him and the relationship that you guys have that necessarily as an eighth or ninth or tenth grader that that's what they should be trying to yeah. do because, like, some guys, I would imagine like him, 
where I might be playing checkers when I play. I mean, they're playing chess. Like they're actually, even when he leaves his feet, it's not based on hope. And to your point, there's a scheme involved where he knows where guys are going to be, but he also has the ability to see almost what's going to happen. And part of that is just his skill, God-given ability. But anyway, yeah. just really cool to see the combination of you guys, your, your ability to to give him confidence and allow him to do it, and then him just kind of taking that forward. It was special. It was fun to coach. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.